In this video, we will configure your ColdFusion server to send emails. We will also configure your development computer to view and debug those emails. So I'm here on the website of Fake SMTP. Fake SMTP is a free application that is used for testing emails in applications easily. So this is an application that is specific to developers. You can go to the download link here to download the latest version of fake SMTP, which is version 2 at the time of shooting these videos. And to find the fake SMTP website, you simply type fake SMTP on Google and you will find this page very easily. I have already downloaded fake SMTP. It is the jar file that is here on my desktop. JAR means Java Archive, so fake SMTP is a little Java utility. It means that you need the Java runtime environment to run fake SMTP, but this Java environment also is a condition to run ColdFusion and ColdFusion Builder, so you should be ready to go. I will therefore double click on that file to execute fake SMTP. The good news also is that because this is a Java application, it will run the exact same way on Mac, Windows and also other operating systems. Fake SMTP let me choose a port number and you see that by default it will try to use port 25, which is the default SMTP port. So I will try to start the fake SMTP server and you see that I have an error because port 25 is already used by another application. This is no surprise and this is no problem. If your email client is open, that is probably the application that is using port 25. Remember that port 25 is the default SMTP port. So in this case, I will simply try to run this fake SMTP server on another port number. And I will choose, for example, 2525. And I will try now to start the fake SMTP server on that new port number. And you see that now the server started successfully. The next operation is to ask ColdFusion to send emails to that fake SMTP server. So I will return to the browser and I will return to the ColdFusion administrator. So once I log in to the administrator, I go to the mail page here in the server settings category. So let's go and it is on that page that you will specify all the email settings for ColdFusion. The mail server in my case is localhost. This is the name of my local machine and this is where my fake SMTP server is running. In a production environment, you should ask your hosting provider to tell you the name or the IP address of the email server that you shall use. In a production environment, you also need a username and a password to authenticate to that mail server. But here for fake SMTP, we don't need that authentication, so I can leave those two fields empty. Other possible settings is right here, a little box that will verify the mail connection. So when we will submit the new email configuration, ColdFusion will verify if it can connect to the server. I can also change the server port. You see port 25 by default, but remember that I'm using port 2525 in this example. Some other possible settings is right here at the bottom of the page. You can ask ColdFusion to log all mail messages sent by ColdFusion. This is something that can be useful in a development environment, but you don't want to select this box in a production environment because that can lead to a very, very big log file that can affect performances. So now I will submit my changes and you see that ColdFusion could successfully connect to my fake SMTP server. The settings that you enter on that page in the ColdFusion administrator affect the whole ColdFusion server. If you want a mail configuration that is specific to your application, you should return to ColdFusion Builder and open your application.cfc file because in the application.cfc file, you can add an additional CF set and you can call this variable this.smtp server settings. Now this variable should be a structure, so you would need those curly braces. And that structure can take three keys, the server, the username, and the password. If you use this.smtp server settings in your application.cfc, your application will use those email settings instead of those that are specified in the ColdFusion administrator. But in my case, in this example, I don't need this CF set in my application.cfc 
file, I will need the default SMTP server that I just supplied in the Confusion Administrator. You are now ready to watch the next video in which we will write the Confusion code that will actually send these emails.